Hey folks, welcome back to uh, the second tutorial um, for 3D modeling. Um, the first thing you're going to do is load up the website SculptGL, and uh, the first thing I'll do is clear my scene so that I can bring in my previous project. So I'm just going to go to clear or scene and then clear scene, click OK, and then I'm going to go to file, add object, and I should have the save to my downloads folder. I can see my file and I will click open. So that should load up my project where I left off. Um, I'm gonna first start by getting rid of the grid here. Uh, it just kind of gets in the way. So I will go to scene and then uncheck show grid. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of things here to improve the look of this before I start the painting process. Um, and I wanna focus a little bit more on the detail of the face today uh, and the ears as well. Um, if we look back at our reference image, you can see there's a couple of things I need to do. Um, like create the indentation in the ear. I'd like to bring out the eye a little bit more, and I'm gonna work on the snout and mouth a little bit, and we'll try some new tools to get those to look as good as we can. Um, so first, the ears. Um, I think it's helpful sometimes to see the wireframe that uh, your model is built from. Um, so I'll drop down rendering here. Uh, this is the uh, arrow at the upper right and I'll click on wireframe. And what that's gonna show me is the actual structure of this. Uh, where do the planes and vertexes come together? Um, and that helps me figure out when it's time for me to remesh. So if I drop down topology, remember we've got these remesh links. Um, I've actually started using the, the one below. It um, creates a model based on triangles as opposed to uh, squares or rectangles. So I'm, I'm gonna click remesh here um, and it takes it a second. Um, and now you can see uh, everything is sort of mostly equal size triangles. All right, so if I need to uh, create the indentation in the ear, um, I'm going to do something we didn't do last week, and it's very, it's very simple. Um, I'm going to actually deflate um, this portion of the ear. So if I go to uh, my list of tools here, one of them is inflate, right? We've used that. But there is an option here you might have noticed. Uh, it says negative. You can use the N key or the uh, Alt key. If I click that, it actually does sort of the opposite. So instead of inflating, it's going to deflate. Um, that's gonna be really good for the inside of my ear here. Notice how symmetry is turned on. So whatever I do to one ear will also happen on the other. Uh, I'm going to um, increase the intensity a little bit and I'm going to just start to push in that portion of the ear. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a minute working on this and I'll speed this up in the video. Okay, now I'm going to uh, bring out the eye a little bit and I'll use the brush tool. I wanna to take a look at my reference again, make sure I'm working in the right place. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out where that spot is on my model. And then I'll come around to the snout. Now, when I go to make the indentations for the nostrils, um, again, I have a couple of options. I think I'm going to use the um, inflate with the negative turned on to push in those indentations. And if it looks like I don't have quite enough triangles here to get a smooth uh, geometry, I can always drop down topology and remesh. And let's see how that looks. Okay, go back in and do a little bit more here. And from a distance, that's starting to look pretty good. Okay, the next area I'm going to work on is the feet. So I'm going to uh, zoom in first and take a look at where I'm starting. Um, I want to bring these out a little bit. And I think in this case, uh, I'm going to use the brush tool just to add a little bit more clay and flatten out this foot here. Um, so I'm going to switch my tool here to brush, and I'm just going to start to uh, bring, uh, bring up my brush size a little bit and just start to add a little bit more. I want to take again a look at my reference image um, so I can see these come forward quite a bit and they've got these separated toes. Okay, and same thing for the back feet. All right, so that means I'm mostly adding clay to the front of the foot here. And again, I'll speed up a little bit. Um, and so you'll see me working uh, in the sped up time lapse portion of this video.
All right, so those feet are looking a bit better there. Um, obviously, I would need to do a little bit more work, but uh, you'll notice that I was using a variety of tools, uh, inflate and then move. Um, and of course, hitting remesh uh, to smooth things out there. So it's going to use a little bit of work, but uh, given how much time we're going to spend on this project, uh, I would say this is about the level of detail that I'm hoping you get this week. Um, the next thing I want to jump to is painting. Um, obviously, things like the back legs and the tail need a bit of work, uh, but I do want to switch gears here for a minute. So I'm actually going to um, turn off my wireframe here, and I'll do that just by clicking rendering and then wireframe. Um, and now we're going to switch gears entirely. Um, what we can do is switch to the tool called Paint. And I'll talk about this briefly. Um, what you have here is a uh, radius, right? So this is how big the paintbrush is, and an intensity slider. Uh, the hardness slider doesn't really do very much. Um, so I'll leave that right about in the middle, and I'll, I'll um, bring my radius a little bit lower. Um, now, your color picker here, uh, it says, is, is called albedo. Um, and if I select a color, so for example, if I want this to be kind of more of a, a gray, um, gray color like that, I can pick a color and then select paint all. Um, you know, if you were to pick, uh, you know, blue or something. Notice how the whole creature turns that color while you're selecting it. Um, but you actually, if you want to actually be that color, you have to click paint all. Um, so I'm going to start with this kind of basic gray, but then I want to take a look at shading in the eye a little bit more um, and the insides of the ear. So if I rotate around to the inside of the ear, which is a little bit more pink, um, I'll get that lined up. I'll um, select my color, so it's going to be in sort of the pink range here, which is a kind of red, and I'll select a color. Now remember, the color of the whole creature, I'm just right now picking the inside of the ear color. Okay, um, so I've got that color picked, and now with my paintbrush um, tool and my radius selected, I can now start to paint in that interior, and it will paint on the opposite side as well. And so if I back up a little bit, Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm going to zoom in on the eye area as well. Okay, so I'm using a very, very small brush now for the eye. I'm going to drop that radius down to uh, maybe around 15. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to uh, select a dark color for the outlining of the eye. And I'll start to just lay in some color. Now, you'll notice it's not very smooth. Um, that's just sort of a function of... Um, how complex your, your uh, geometry is. So you can see if I you know, select the wireframe here, um, you know, it really can't get that much more detailed. So I don't want you to expect these to be super, super detailed, but um, you can certainly give the impression um, of the eye. And things will always look better from, from a distance. Uh, I could also remesh to give myself a little bit more um, resolution. If you increase the resolution here, you can see it's set to 150. I don't want to bump that up too much, but let's say I went up to 200 and hit remesh. Um, it's going to let my paint be a little bit more precise. So I'll let that go there. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm just going to lay that in a little bit. I'll put in the eye here and just kind of going over and over it. I'll take a look at my reference again. And let me zoom out. Okay. And now we're starting to get um, something that's actually looking pretty good. I'm going to, again, turn off my wireframe so I can actually see what it looks like. Last step, uh, I'm going to go in and work on the nose a little bit more here. And again, I'll look at my reference. I think I'll probably switch back to the pink I was using before for the ear, looks like. And a really neat technique. Um, there is a color picker uh, option. Um, I can actually select the exact same pink I was using before uh, using the color picker checkbox here. So if I click this, okay, and then hover over that color, I can now select it. And now that's my active color. So when I go into paint the nostrils, it's exactly the same color I was using before for the insides of the ears. So let's back up a little bit. All right, well, obviously this needs work, um, but I think you uh, have the basic concept at this point. Um, remember to uh, remesh when things are getting a little bit weird, use your smooth tool. Um, and you can always go back and forth between painting and modeling. Um, you know, here I, I still have the option, of course, to go back in and, you know, inflate the, uh, you know, the eyebrow a little bit or anything like that. Okay, and so if uh, you've got all that finished up, um, the last thing, of course, is to 
save your uh, SGL file. Make sure you're always saving that. And you can upload that to the discussion board at the end of the week. I'd also like you to be able to save a JPEG, basically an image file. Um, and there's not an easy way to do that in SculptGL, unfortunately. You'll see under your file types, there's nothing that says JPEG here, uh, but there is a kind of a trick to it. And so what we can do is to um, basically get our creature you know, loaded up in kind of a three quarter view. And there's a very cool feature in Windows, which will let us make a JPEG uh, of anything on the screen. All you have to do here is um, click on the little circle, uh, type here to search and type in snipping. All right, so right away, the snipping tool app pops up. I can click that, and when that appears, I'll click New. And all I need to do here is basically drag a box around the part of the screen that I want to capture. So I'll click that. Um, I can see my brush actually turned up on there. That shouldn't happen, um, but it's very easy just if you move your brush away. Um, once that image has popped up here, I can go to Save As find the folder I've been saving things to, and I can call this aardvark, and save. If I return to that same folder, you can now see there is a JPEG of your model. Okay, so that's sort of the, the quick way to create a JPEG. Um, I would love for you to export one of these as well and upload that with your SGL file to the discussion board at the end of the week. That's also a really nice way to share your artwork um, with people who aren't familiar with, with uh, SculptGL, which you know most people won't be. All right, folks, um, please have that uh, submitted by the end of the week, and, and I'll see you all in class next week.